Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. A new survey points to a strong appetite for renewables projects wanting to connect to the grid as the latest public procurement round highlights ongoing grid stress. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What does the latest South African Renewable Energy Grid survey reveal? Well, I think, uh, as you said, it's a, there's a really strong appetite for project development in South Africa. So last year, it showed a m massive potential pipeline of 66 gigawatts. This year, it's 133 gigawatts. Now, one of the reasons is that the, the survey, it's now in its third year, and there more, more people know about it. So there are far more respondents to the survey. I think it's a double the amount of respondents. Uh, but it's also very interesting to see, uh, even though load shedding is waning, you know, people, are, developers are looking forward into the system. And also electricity, there's a view that electricity is going to be the key uh, energy uh, component. In, you know, we've been a very much in oil-based economies, but we're seeing electrification of just about everything. So as you look forward, uh, developers are looking at massive amounts of electricity that's going to be needed. And if South Africa, for instance, wants to develop a, a hydrogen, a green hydrogen economy, there's going to be a need for a lot more uh, wind and solar. And uh, there's also, the survey shows a lot more battery development going on right through the country. But as you would expect, you know, the, most of the development is it's really centered on our renewables rich provinces, Northern Cape being the primary location. Free State, interestingly, coming through in second place where the number of projects are being developed. And, uh, but generally around the country, a, a little bit of a dip off in the Western Cape and KwaZulu-Natal still fairly modest relative to the rest of the country, but still a, a, a lot of capacity that's uh, under development. Also interesting is the amount of what we'd almost say grid-ready projects. You know, So these are projects that could enter into commercial operation in in say three years, they've got their record of decision environmentally, they've done their feasibility studies. So they're looking, ultimately they'll be looking to, to connect to the grid. And there's about a, a pipeline of about 66 gigawatts uh, in that sort of category. So <laughs> it's really a large amount. Remember our whole system at the moment is about 40 gigawatts. Obviously it's a different type of system. Coal, uh, coal dominates and that's sort of a steady state sort of supply. So obviously variable renewable you'd need a lot more capacity to produce the same amount of energy. But that's really the picture. A lot of projects being developed and a lot of projects that are wanting to connect to the grid uh, over the next uh, sort of three to 10 years. How will the survey results be used? So I think, you know, we've got the transmission development plan, which is now the custodian of that plan is the national transmission company, South Africa, which is, the separated uh, uh, subsidiary of Eskom. So it still falls under Eskom Holdings, but it's been separated and it's run as a separate business. And ultimately the new legislation, which the president signed last Friday, uh, basically is to have a transmission uh, system operator developed over the next five years that's totally outside of Eskom. So that's where we're going and the NTCSA will be I think morphed into this TSO ultimately. So they are the custodians of the transmission development plan. And this, so these survey results really feed into the, the development of that plan. Now we know we haven't uh, updated that plan for a couple of years, but, but it, it says that we need, say for instance on the transmission system, 14,000 kilometers of new transmission power lines, lots more substation capacity, etc. So this really tells the NTCSA where developers are, are, are like excited or, or well advanced with their projects and where those developers want to connect to the grid and what technologies they're working on. So again, as you would suspect, most of this is solar PV, that's the majority, but there's a lot of uh, uh, wind in there as well and a lot of battery storage and interestingly more and more hybrid type development. So either wind, solar, battery, or solar battery, or wind battery, those sort of projects that are that are starting to emerge around the country. So it's really about giving this, the grid planners visibility of where the projects are, 
so that they can start developing the grid. And I think it basically reinforces the real need to accelerate uh, the grid rollout. Um, and uh, especially on the north-south backbone corridor, there needs to be a lot more because the electrons are now going to flow more and more from the south uh, west of the country to the northeast, whereas we've always had the other direction in terms of flow. So it really sort of reinforces that we, we have a we really need to get moving on our grid investment plans, but not only on these big co backbone networks. It's, it also shows that the collector networks, there's a big deficiency there. We're going to need to have those collector networks and those overlap municipal distribution networks. So the focus can't just be on the backbone. We have to look at the collector networks. So that really gives us good visibility of where the projects are being developed and the urgency around b building out the grid. Meanwhile, a mixed picture has emerged for wind and solar projects following the latest bidding round. Yes, bid window seven, a lot of uncertainty ahead of the bidding for bid window seven was delayed from April till the middle of August and now we have the results of how many bids were submitted. And the good news is that a number of bids were submitted because there was some co concern that uh, with the changes of uh, regulation and people really pursuing a lot more private work, which also came up in the grid survey, interestingly, a lot of projects are being developed now for private power purchase agreements uh, rather than public procurement. But uh, that, that the, this whole um, stop-start around the uh, public procurement and the failure of recent rounds. There was some, so there was some concern about bid window seven, but the good news is that we got more than the 5,000 that's being, uh, being allocated to the round that has been bid. The bad news is that we wanted to get 3,200 megawatts of that in the form of wind and the, in the balance in the form of solar. And we've got a lot of solar bids, solar PV bids over 8.5 gigawatts and not enough wind bids at all. And that was the concern in the run-up to this bid window. We heard the, the wind association saying, you know, without reserving grid capacity and without co the curtailment framework being in place, there were going to be problems in those wind-rich territories. Because it takes a long time to develop a wind project relative to a solar, solar project. So there was a view that maybe some of the the, the grid capacity that's available in Pumalanga, wind projects will go there. That's not been the case. They're all in the traditional regions uh, of the Cape provinces, and that's where the main grid constraints are. So we've got a, not quite below half, but half, around half of that 3,200 megawatts we were looking, that's been allocated to wind, has been bid. And now we don't even know what the, you know, the, when the assessment's gonna be, what are the, you know, the, um, the prices of those. So I think we're heading for a difficult outcome from the wooden perspective. From a solar PV perspective, it looks like an embarrassment of riches. The, there should be, uh, we should get the best tariffs out of that. Um, and again, we saw similar from the grid survey, a lot of interest in those, uh, in the free state. So uh, um, for those solar PV, but we're going to have to wait and see how the, how the evaluation goes. But it looks like as with bid windows six, when not one win project crossed the threshold into preferred st widow status. I'm hoping, we're all hoping it's not going to be the same outcome for uh, bid window seven, but it looks like precarious. So we'll have to wait and see what the evaluation is going to take now around three months. And then obviously projects will be announced and then there's a period thereafter for those projects to get to financial close. Um, so, and then they get into construction. But it is, there's going to be a lot of watching to see how bid window seven, uh, you know, the outcome of that, but particularly on the wind side. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.